a good day, had a good week. Uh, we're going to start off with a Bible verse this morning. It's going to be coming from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to start from verse 28 to verse 31. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Some of you may know this. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I've read from verse 28 to 31 of the 40th chapter of Isaiah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. At this time, we're going to bow for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we come this morning as humble as you know how. First of all, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity you've given us. We just ask now that you would look down upon this service. Bless the speaker of the hour. Bless each and every one under the sound of my voice, Father. Bless the homes, bless the families, whatever they stand in the need of. Lord, we just ask that you continually watch over past town. So we realize and recognize, Father, this pandemic has shut us down, but you have still taken care of us. You looked out for us, and Father, you kept us strong. We thank you for this virtual uh, meeting this morning. God, we just ask that you will continue to keep your fence of protection around all of us. Watch over us, lead God, and direct us in the way you would have us to go. That when we'll be able to get back into the church, we won't have missed a step, Lord. We thank you, God, for all your blessings. So we just ask you to watch over the sick and shut in. We just ask you to be with those bereaved families this morning. And God, we ask you to watch over those in the hospitals and nursing homes. And Lord, we just want to say thank you for all your blessings. We continually, continually praise and uplift your holy and righteous name. These blessings we ask. In Christ's name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Uh, we have a few announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, Thursday, there's going to be a joint board meeting at 6 o'clock. Saturday, this Saturday coming, at 6 o'clock, there's going to be a virtual, a virtual church meeting. Saturday, May 20th at 6 o'clock. That's going to be like we had the last time. We won't be voting on anything unless, you know, something comes up in the meeting. But uh, we just want to kind of let the church know where we are, what's been going on, and uh, what we're looking forward to. Reverend Teal called me yesterday. He said uh, he won't be available Wednesday for Bible study, so there'll be no Bible study on Wednesday. Uh, he and his wife are going to Virginia. It's their... Um, the wedding anniversary is uh, one day this week. I forget what day he told me. So they're off going to Virginia for their wedding anniversary. Um, I guess I'm supposed to read this card that was sent. Uh, it says, to the First Baptist Church of Pastown, your thoughts, prayers, kind words, and sentiments meant so much to us as we experienced our health issues. Thank you so much. The love is indeed felt and so much appreciated, Brother Walt and Sister Delana Teal. I'm gonna try to briefly go through the sick and shut in. Yeah. If anybody has any any other names or any anybody that you know of for the sick and shut in list, you can let me know at the end or if I miss anybody. Sister Lula Pollard, Brother Walt and Priscilla Johnson, Ella Rudolph, Fonnie Rudolph. Shirley Hines, Esther Gaffney, Betty Lou Burton, Eddie Young, Lillian Alder, Reverend Brody Mathis, and Reverend Norman Allen. Keep Reverend Allen in your prayers. He was uh, taken to the hospital this week, but Nate texted me this morning and said uh, he's doing better and he may be home sometime this week. But keep him in your prayers. Mm -hmm. Sister Ann Grant, John Johnson, Joyce Crutchfield, Ruth Henry, Emmett Hunt, Sharon Thompson, Delana Till, and Clinton Hurst. 
Give me the names I have. If it's anybody else, uh, please let me know. A bereavement list. Uh, the family of Brother Leslie Crutchfield, Sister Maxine Davis's family, Sister Kim and Annabelle Jackson's family, Denise, Sandra Jones, and their family, Diane Stevens, the Tools, Thompson, Lewis, and Burt's family, the Teal family, Brother John and Sister Linda Monroe and their family, Reverend Steve and Johnette Crutchfield and family, the Johnson family, Carolyn Johnson and her family, the Miller family, and the family of Brother Earl Miller, uh, the Holmes family, the family of Sister Pat Johnson, family of J.C. Brown, the family of Jeff Scott and the loss of his daughter, uh, the, fa the Anderson family, Dana Anderson and his family, the Long family, Reverend, Henderson, Reverend Anderson's family, the Mayo family, Brother Walter Fields and his family, the Walker family, the London Brake family, and most recently uh, from our church, two sister uh, Barbara Bottoms, the Carter family, and the Jacks family in prayer, and the loss of Brother Herman Carter. Uh, Herman's funeral will, will be Friday at Past Town. It will be a viewing from 9 to 11. The service starts at 11. So keep Barbara and her family in your prayers. Amen. Amen. And his wife, Lynn, Joe. Oh, Lynn. Yeah, his wife, Lynn. She's part of the Smith family also. Uh, Ricky, you had an announcement? Yeah, I, I got an announcement. I'll be brief. It's really quick. I'm making this announcement for one of our own young Gabrielle Hines. Revival Production is having a showing, and they're doing a showing of the story Ruby Bridges. And it's actually being directed and choreographed by Gabrielle Hines, our own. Amen. So, uh, yeah, she's doing an awesome job with this show. She's really put a lot of time and effort into it. So I just wanted to reach out to the church family and let you know that the show is going to be next week. And the show is going to be live. It's actually going to be a live show in person at the Revival Productions. Re Re Revival Productions is down on uh, somewhat like Lincoln Highway. It's uh, 17 North Church Street. As soon as you pass Zeke's and you get ready to hit the flats, that church right up. It used to be a church. It's like a little turn us on Church Street right before you really get into Coatesville. So um, the performances will be there. It's on May 21st. There's an evening performance, May 22nd and May 23rd. And there's both evening and matinee performances. It's free for students from kindergarten to 12th grade. I, I can't remember how much the tickets are, but I have uh, all the information in the email. If you would like to go and attend and support young Gabrielle or just see a show there, they will have social distancing in place. They will have all of that, all of those mechanisms and masks will be required uh, to see this show. Just reach out to me, call me on my cell. And I can forward you over Gabrielle's information and information to purchase the tickets. I think they're like twelve, either eight dollars or twelve dollars, like eight for uh, young adults and twelve for. So, if you want to support, if you want to come out and you want to see that show, uh, uh, just reach out to me and I'll put you in touch with Gabrielle, and you can come see that show. That's all my announcement. Okay, thank you, Rick. That's good. Thank that's you, good. Jeff. Oh, Gabby's hey, doing amen. well. That's, amen. that's good to hear. Amen. Oh, yeah. And oh, Roland we, Holmes is doing the, the music part of it. Oh, oh amen. amen. Okay. Very good. Very yeah, good. so it's 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 an awesome show. You got Gabrielle choreographing and Roland Holmes doing all the music production of it. Okay. So good. she's actually directing and choreographing it and he's doing the music. So it's it's pretty good. Oh, okay. And it's the story of Ruby Bridges. If you know the story back in the civil rights movement, how Ruby and her family had to endure the hardship of, you know, being the first face of the civil rights for the education. The it's, it was just imperative back at that time. So it's, it's going to be a good show. Anyway, nevertheless. Okay. Thank you. Amen. All right. Thank you, Ricky. That's, that's, that's very good. Very good. Well, Gabby's, Gabby's getting right on up there. Um, 
One other yeah. thing I want to say is that um, a lot of you are getting a little antsy, I know. And it's, it's sooner or later it's going to be the elephant in the room. But uh, after the church meeting, we're, we're going to get together with the deacons and the uh, trustees and the ministers, try to put a plan together for if and when we can open. We don't have a target date yet, but we're going to put a plan together so we'll, we will be prepared when the time comes. So we ask you to please be a little more patient. We are, we're preparing to reopen. A lot of things have to be done. The, the church has to be sanitized. Uh, we'll be having temperature guns and, and whatever we need to uh, social distance or whatever. But we're uh, we're going to start working on it next week with that group. So um, we'll be letting you know from time to time what's going on. I know a lot of you got excited when when they said you don't have to wear the mask. I think you know, judging from some of the uh, townships and things, store owners and and even the doctors' offices around the area. Some of them think it's a little too early. Yeah. So we're just going to play it by ear, but we're going to have a plan ready in place what, if and when the time comes soon that we can reopen. So just be patient. You'll be hearing from us as to what's going on. And uh, that's it. Reverend Crushfield, good morning. Your, your mic's not on. Thank you. Good morning. Right. Sorry. Good, morning. Good, morning. good morning. Good morning. How's everything? It's all uh, wonderful here in downtown. How is it? I know the sun's shining in downtown, ain't it? Yes, sir. It's shining, shining bright. All right, all right, all right, my brother. My 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 favorite line from Brother Harlan Wilson. You know what the question is? Is there a word from the Lord this morning? And I have an answer to that favorite line of yours from Brother Harlan Wilson, and that is, yes, there is a word from the Lord today. All right, brother. Amen. Well, thank you. That word can be found in the Gospel of St. Luke. Okay. If you have your Bibles, you turn there, please, with me to uh, Luke chapter 17. Before I start, I just want to have a little short word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come today and we say thank you. We just thank you, God, for being God. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for all the things that you have done for us, that you're doing and you, and you will do. Have your way today with these, your people. Bless, strengthen, and encourage. Give us all what we need for our lives today. And just thank you for Jesus Christ, your son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. In Luke's gospel, chapter 17, we're gonna read two verses. Chapter 17, verse 5 and verse 6. You have your Bibles, you'll find these words recorded. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. Just for a little while today, I'd like to preach it from the thought, faith, effective faith. And after hearing our Sunday school lesson, if you didn't hear it this morning, you missed a blessing. Mm -hmm. um, after hearing the Sunday school lesson this morning, I feel like I can just say a few things due to benediction and we can go on home. But God has given me an assignment, so I'm gonna go ahead and do what he gave me, but thanks be to God for uh, Deacon Andrews and the Sunday school lesson. And we ultimately thank God for who he is. Mm -hmm. Faith, you know, as we go through this pandemic and as uh, Deacon Lewis had spoken and uh, I didn't hear all of Brother Campbell, Deacon Campbell's stuff and what was said all the way before that. Uh, we're coming to a point now to where we're seeing this thing change or wind down or wind up. But there was wisdom in what Deacon Lewis said. He says, we need to take time and be careful and check and see what God says first before we go moving. And so for a little while today, I want to talk about really effective faith. That's what I want us to really get out of this message. So in this gospel of Luke, you know, Luke being a physician, he was really exact about things. And 
he wrote about things uh, concerning us and, and just like this pandemic, concerning issues that we go through every day. And the disciples uh, in this chapter were going through a thing of uh, forgiveness leading up to when Jesus uh, answered this question by the apostles. And Jesus is telling them to forgive. And immediately after he told them, challenged them with that, they said, increase our faith. And so by them saying that, that gives us the uh, implication that uh, our faith, first of all, uh, is lacking or low. So they're saying increase our faith. And then just by the way he answered it, you find out that Jesus is saying to them, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. Jesus was in a, in a, in a, in, in uh, so many words was trying to say to them, it's not so much how much faith you have, it's that you have real faith. And so in this pandemic, we find out that faith is something that we, we use each and every day of our lives in order to make it from sunrise to sundown. Daily, you have, it, it takes faith. You don't just get up and start your day without God waking you up. And when you go to bed at night, you don't expect that you're not going to wake up in the morning. You just have that faith. We use the example all the time of a park bench and we sit down on a bench and we place faith in that bench. And that's true. We place faith in that bench or that seat. We just know that it's going to hold us. And so every day we use faith in order to make it. The pandemic and the COVID-19 has taught us that we need to have faith and even more, uh, have even more faith as the world wrestles with the continual changes that are happening with this virus. Just as when the United States declares good things are happening, you hear it on the news, all the, the thing is going down. We're, we're, we're having success, the people are not dying and everything is coming to where we thought it would go as the scientists had directed us. And they said changes are happening, good changes are happening. We are moving in the right direction. Uh, India has a flare up. You see where they're actually burning bodies. They, the people in the, in the, they have not, not enough space or they can't treat the people. So you find out that these things are going up in, or, or there's a rise of a COVID in Italy, uh, in Africa, and, and not to mention even in England. Even now, most recently, the young people in America, I saw this morning where a child under a year old has gotten the vaccine. So we need to get vaccinated and, and the terrorists are attacking our major resources over the weekend last week. They, they uh, the smugglers hijacked our gasoline and people were panicking and worrying about are we gonna have enough gas, but uh, terrorists are holding our economy. And so food prices are rising and Jobs are not as plentiful as, as, as we first thought. You know, we thought that we were going to have a lot of jobs. And, and have you stopped to even remember the regular stuff, the regular things that we already had gone through before? We're not even talking about stuff. We're talking about stuff that's going on now just to get through a day. Things like funerals. Things like Black Lives Matter. Things like social gatherings. Mental health issues problems that are popping up that are still from the back burner when the pandemic first started. So due to the changes in how we live daily, the disciples were dealing with forgiveness. They weren't actually dealing particularly with all of the same issues as with our society today. But there is one thing that is for certain. We all need to have faith. And to those who believe in Jesus, it ought to be an effective faith. This world needs people who have effective faith. Right now, the world is in an uproar. They're panicking. They don't, they don't know what to do. But those of the way, those who are Christians, those who are believers, yeah, we get rocked a little bit too. Our faith, uh, uh, as Reverend Till often says, is only as strong as the thing that you place it in, sometimes get rocked. 
And if there is somebody who does not know Jesus Christ in the part of their sins and are listening to me today and you don't believe in Jesus Christ and you don't have faith in Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you today and hope that at the end of whatever I say, will encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ to, 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 to help guide you through life now. But for those of us who, who understand Jesus Christ, who know Jesus Christ, we know that faith is something that the Bible has taught us about from the beginning all the way to the end. But when we think about faith, we think about Father Abraham, one who God made a covenant with and a, a, a promise to that because of his faith that God uh, counted it as righteousness and allowed him to become one who would be the first of many for abraham believed he went to another country he went going without knowing trusting god and god counted to him as righteousness for we recognize as even through the sunday school lesson this morning that our righteousness is as filthy rags but the righteousness of god is perfect unchinked nothing wrong and when you talk about righteousness our righteousness has to be lined up with his righteousness in other words our righteousness has to come under his control because we have no righteousness our righteousness goes from minute to minute you hear the news you believe in that and then you begin to panic and so our righteousness has to line up with what the word of god says and in order to do that you have to do what that text told you this morning. You have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he is our Lord and Savior, that he is the one who rose from the dead and that he's coming back again. Therefore, you begin to establish the righteousness of God in your life by allowing his righteousness to come into your, to our lives. And so... We find that righteousness is a part of faith. Our faith as the disciples sometimes becomes shook. And in order to understand faith and to get to effective faith, even with, with, with Abraham, we find that as you studied and read that story, Abraham's faith was not strong in the beginning. Then he got a mature faith. I mean, uh, he began to start believing and then finally he got to a level of mature faith. And so I looked at faith and I wanted to get a definition of what the Webster Dictionary said. And if you just bear with me a minute, I'll read these off. I haven't read my sermon in a while, so just bear with me. Usually I do my reading full and go, but this time the Lord wanted me to take my time with this. And so faith, as described by, by Webster's, it says, it's an allegiance to duty or a person. Loyalty. Now, as an explanation of loyalty, they said, lo loyalty lost faith in the company's president. Faith is also fidelity to one's promises. Sincerity of intentions acted in good faith. Belief and trust in and loyalty to God. Belief in the traditional doctrines of a religion. Firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Clinging to the faith that her missing son would one day return. Something that is believed, especially with strong conviction, especially a system of religious beliefs like Protestant faith. Now, I uh, don't agree totally with some of those definitions, but some of them come very kind of close because they talk about having a, a strong conviction, especially a system of religious beliefs. And the reason I tell you why I don't believe with it totally is because I don't believe that our faith is a religious system of beliefs. I believe our, our, our belief is a relationship with a Christ in our lives and so we find that faith as described by the world is faith and it comes close but this morning brothers and sisters 
Those of you who know Christ, those of you who understand Christ, those of you who hold on to Christ, I believe you know where I might be going. There's a book in the Bible called Hebrews that lets us know and tells us what faith is. And I'd just like to read a few verses of it. It says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse one, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, faith is proof without having seen it. Abraham went going not knowing. He trusted in God and believed in God. We, as we go through this pandemic, and even beyond that pandemic, it's going to take faith in order for us to get through this time. And even in our time, even now, before the pandemic, it took faith then and it's going to take faith afterwards. It's going to take faith in between and it's going to take faith until the day that we go to be with him. You see. That Bible answers the question in the book of Hebrews. But what we find along the way of life, just like the disciples ask God to increase their faith, we find that as we walk daily, sometimes we have different levels of faith. You see, in the same chapter, in chapter 7, Luke gives an account of a man who had great faith. It talks of a centurion who had a servant who was sick. And he sent for Jesus. And he asked Jesus to heal his centurion. But it was because of the centurion's faith that Jesus was able to heal that man, although Jesus could have healed him rather than the centurion and asked him to come or not. But what I'm trying to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, is that Jesus made a comment after he healed the servant. He said, I have not seen such great a faith in all of Israel as this man. But then we find also in Matthew, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 31, that there was a display of little faith. For Jesus had walked on the water. Peter, who saw Jesus, was doubtful and he began to look down. He began to doubt. He began to lose his faith. Jesus had to ask the question, oh, ye of little faith. Why do you doubt me? I know somebody out there because I'm guilty of it, too. There has been times in my life when. My faith has come to a doubt and I've said, is this really? Is God really? Is he really able? And I don't know about you, my brothers and my sisters, but I believe somebody ought to be able to say amen because I know there was a time in my life when I thought I wouldn't be where I am today. But thanks be to God because I held on with just a little mustard grain of faith. You see, as long as you have faith in who he is and what he can do and how he can do it, as long as you believe it with all of your heart, God is able to perform it. Mm -hmm. Next, we find that in Romans, Brother Paul, come on here, Brother Paul. Paul, who was one who wrote a lot of the New Testament, it was a very strong, a uh, person for God, a spokesman for God, said that we, we, we have weak faith. 
There's times when our faith gets weak, when we just don't know how we're going to make it through. But just as Luke was telling us and Jesus was displaying to them that if you have a mustard grain of faith, mm -hmm. it's just the fact that you have faith, that you have real faith. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus and God, he knows all about us. Mm -hmm. He knows that there's going to come times in our life when we're going to have weaknesses, that our faith is going to be weak. There are going to be times that we're going to have doubt. There's times that we're going to have little faith. Then there was even one time, again in Luke's gospel, when Jesus calms the storm on the boat and, and the disciples was out on the sea and the disciples was doubtful then. Jesus had to ask the disciples, where is your faith? Mm -hmm. Where is your faith, my brothers and sisters? Well, somebody might say, okay, now I got a basic understanding of that. But how do I get this faith? Well, I'm so glad that you asked me because the Bible says that in Romans chapter 10, mm -hmm. it says that faith cometh by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot of things all during the day. We hear about the news telling us all of the bad things so that they can make more money. We hear about people talking about as brother Andrews talked and, sp and spoke on this morning about their accolades mm -hmm. and how they do things and do this and do that and find out that for us, it doesn't work. You see, faith only comes by hearing the word of God. God is the one who can give you your faith. There are a lot of words to be heard, but when you hear God's word, it makes a big difference. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a witness. We just talked yeah. about it in the book of Hebrews. Let me read just a few of those witnesses that give us what faith will do for you in your life. It says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witnesses that he made, he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaking. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God God, because God, God, God translated him for before the translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God, please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And you can go on, my brothers and sisters, and read it on your own time. For there, let you know that uh, there is a witness that goes so strongly before us. And even today, many of us have gone through battles of cancer. Many of us have gone through battles of heart issues. Many of us have gone through issues of marital problems, sicknesses with our family. I don't know what it is, Brother Andrews, but maybe this is your day. But I remember when Reverend Mobley, Reverend Allen, Reverend Butcher, Reverend Till, and myself went down to the children's hospital to see your son who had a skin disease that none of the doctors knew anything about. But when they went down to Philly, those doctors talked to other doctors from the West Coast, from down South and from all around the world. And the next thing I know, there was a praise report because they found out what was going on with, I believe it was Brother Matt. It might've been Aaron, but I believe it was Matt who had a skin disease and they found that thing out. But I believe that in that time, there was some faith that you and Joni was praying and asking God mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus along with the church. And so God continues to show us about faith that we just have to hold on to yes. our faith. Yes. You see, we need to understand that we can have faith, but in order to have effective faith, it has to be anchored in someone who is able to keep you from falling. Have I got a witness? Amen. You wrote unto him who was able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the Father with what? With exceeding joy to the all wise God. Be power, dominion, majesty, and glory. Paul wrote now unto who is able to abundantly and exceedingly 
exceedingly go by above and beyond what we can think, do, or want. Mm -hmm. God, you see, the book declares he who is faithful and is just. You see, I need his faithfulness. That's how I get effective faith. Why? Because every once in a while, my faith gets a little weak. Oh, yes. Sometimes it gets shipwrecked. Mm. And there's also been even a time or two that there was a lack of faith. Oh, yeah, you don't think preachers and teachers and those who are in leadership and things like that, pastors, they don't have a lack of faith? Don't fool yourself. The devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy. Right. But that's why God told the disciples, if you have just a grain of a mustard seed, and you see a mustard seed is so small, that's the kind of faith. But the faith has to be a, a real faith. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what it looks like, what people might think, mm -hmm. how the devil might attack your mind, how he might make you compare yourself to somebody else. Jesus said, if you have faith, you see, when the woman went to him, he said, your faith has made you whole. When everybody else all around her did not believe the way she believed, she said, I just want to touch the yeah. hem of his garment. Sometimes yeah. that's all we need, just to touch the hem yeah. of his garment. And I really love the old saints when we didn't have all the music. All they had was the washboards and the foot stopping and you get the spirit going through the sound and the rhythm of the rhythm of the music. And every once in a while, somebody would just cry out, mm, mm, mm. oh Lord, don't you know the Bible tells you that the Holy Spirit interprets that and lays it at the feet of Jesus, at the feet of God, so that our faith is interpreted in our moans and our groans. Oh, have mercy on me, Lord, your child for doubting you. Because of my lack of trust in your, your all and by yourself all, your omnipotence. Yes. Yet even when we're going through those times of ineffective struggle with who controls our faith, God is working it out. Yes, yes. He is working it out in and through the trial. Mm -hmm. to build us up in the faith so that we can come to realize and recognize that we must exercise faith mm -hmm. in order to strengthen and increase our faith. Yes. In other words, we need to stand firm in the Lord Jesus as we go through our trials and tribulations because it's building our faith muscle. You see, faith is not only a noun, but faith is also a verb. You see, it's a verb that we have to put into action so that our problems are no longer our problems, but they are our opportunities to build and strengthen our trust in him. You see, you go to the gym to work out your physical body, and build muscles so that you can do all these things and impress everybody. But if you want to impress God, and if you want to please God, you need to work out and build up. Your, you have to build them up through going through the trials of life. And when you go through the trials of life, God will strengthen you and give your faith muscles so that when you see a mountain, You'll be able to say to that mountain, be you removed. Get out from amongst me, Satan. Get behind me, old mountain, because I'm going in the name of Jesus. That's why James wrote that faith without works is dead. Many of us want to claim to have the faith. And I remember as a young man, Adam Clayton Powell used to say, keep the faith. Well, today, church, I'm saying to us all, Keep the faith, baby. Don't let it go because the faith that we have and the person that you place it in is one who will never let you down. Mm -hmm. Total faith in Jesus is the only thing that you need. My faith is built, the songwriter said, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Yeah. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, on Christ, on Christ, 
Mm -hmm. on Steve Patrick, on Christ, mm -hmm. on Steve, on Christ, yeah. on the problems of the world, on Christ, on the new, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. And that's all I got for you today, Amen. my brothers and my sisters. For I said in the beginning, the thing that I want us to see is that we all have a measure of faith, and that's why the disciples asked for God to increase their faith. But what I want us to understand is that in order to make it through, have effective faith yeah. as opposed mm -hmm. to ineffective faith. Uh -huh. You see, people are looking at us. Mm -hmm. People are dependent on us. Whether you want to believe it or not, there's somebody who's watching you right now that you don't even know is watching you. And they're watching you and seeing where your faith is. Do you really believe in God? Or are you just a, a bag of hot air that when the tough times come, you're going to buckle under the pressure and be like the disciples. And Jesus is going to say, oh, ye of little faith. Mm -hmm. In other words, please strive to have effective faith. We all have faith and a measure of faith. Some of us have great faith. So I always have little faith, but please strive to have effective faith. Amen. Put your trust in Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's a good God. Yeah, he makes yes. an awful good friend. Mm -hmm. He won't leave you. And in Matthew, he tells you that I will never leave you nor forsake you. If you go into Psalms, you'll find that he says, yay, when he talks, David talks, he says, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because why? Because thou art with me. Yes, amen. Even the psalmist, the young man wrote, Wherewithal shall a young man change his ways? By taking heed to thy word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Faith, effective faith. Amen. Do you have effective faith? Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A good word this morning. Amen. Amen. Very good word from this morning. We can truly Amen. say we have heard a word from the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Effective faith. Amen. That faith the side of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. Mm -hmm. That was so good. I, I, I'm just happy this morning that you brought that message that we woke some of us up. We Amen. are some of us we go through the motions all the time. Yes. We go through life. We just go through the motions like we're doing everything on our own. But we have to realize and recognize that that faith in God is what's directing us. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. You, know, you can have a lot. Mm -hmm. But we want that effective faith, like Reverend Crutchfield was talking about this morning. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. At this time, Amen. I'm going to praise God. Thank, thank you, Reverend Steve. You thank can. You. Uh, you can close us out with a prayer and a benediction. And uh, Marsha has an announcement when you're done. So Marsha wants to uh, say something. And Marsha, as soon as Steve is done, you can uh, say whatever it is you need to say. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and uh, let us pray. If there's somebody who has a, a special prayer, we're just going to lift up. And uh, maybe there's somebody out there. Let us pray. Gracious God. Mm -hmm. Eternal God, our, our, our Heavenly Father, you who have been so good to us and have been so faithful. Yes. It's not just our faith, but God, you who have been faithful, we thank you because we know that you said that the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Amen. your faith, God. Thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ. God, we pray for those who are grieving today, God. We pray for those who are in the hospitals. Thank you, God, for this message. Give us an effective faith, a faith that trusts you even in the midst of the storm, even when we're weak, even when we're doubtful, even when we're lacking in our faith, God. Keep us, God, this week, this day. And Father, help us to just lean and depend on you even the more. Thank you for past town, God. Give us wisdom, direction, and understanding. Strengthen mm -hmm. all of our families. God bless those who are our members that are in nursing homes yes. and on their beds of affliction. Yes. Thank you, God, for just being who you are. And thank you thank for you. your faith. It's in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling 
and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 Amen.